and welcome to this Saturday evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. It's another episode of What Now? And um, today I will be talking to jazz violinist Scott Tixier. Let me see if I can put this in the comments. Hi everyone. Wow, you guys are all on time. I'm so surprised. <laughs> are you guys bored on your Saturday? Okay, well, I'm waiting on Scott. There he goes. Oh, hold on. Where is the... <laughs> I waved. Sorry. Wrong button. All right. I love people that are on time, so I don't have to do my monologues. Hey, what's up? Hi, how are you? Hey, good. Nice Thank you, you for being on time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm always on time. So. Yeah, well, that's that's refreshing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Your, your brother is already joking. Yeah. <laughs> your brother is making jokes because I told him if your brother is not on time, you're going to have to pretend like you're him. <laughs> yeah. One guy on pen. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm doing good. Yeah? Good. Yeah. And, I've uh, seen so many good things about you. So first of all, <laughs> um, for the people that are tuned in, I've never talked to Scott. I don't know Scott. I haven't met him. I met his brother. And so when I started following his brother, I suddenly saw his live streams with his brother. And I was like, hey, you know, what's going on? I see double. And, <laughs> and so I started um, getting to know who you are and the music that you make. And I'm just, I'm like the biggest fan of the live streams that you two do together. <laughs> Ocean. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, we, so much fun. <laughs> it's it, it's been a while. We haven't done it in a while now. It's okay. Can't do it every day sure. every day. <laughs> yeah. Where where are you right now? Where I'm in Amsterdam. Oh, okay. I thought you were in the yeah. lake. No, I'm in Amsterdam. Um so I'm actually it's evening here. It's nine o'clock. So um, oh, okay. Yeah, so we had to figure out the time, which was great. Um, but yeah, getting back to you, um, when I first started to figure out what you did, I was just so amazed by two talented brothers that just make the world go around with their music. But then also when I spoke to Tony, he told me a little bit about your story because of, you know, that tied into what he was talking about. And that really made me want to talk to you as well. Um, wow. So he told me how he got into the piano. Can I ask you, how did you get into the violin? No, of course you can't. I won't, I won't tell you. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, yeah uh, I started like uh, a long time ago. Uh, when I was like, I don't know, uh, uh, a young uh, kid. And uh, our family was like uh, playing music. So I just... Right. I just like uh, pick an instrument and uh, you know, uh, yeah. So why did you pick the violin? <laughs> um, why the violin? Because I thought it was romantic. Uh, it was like uh, sweet. I don't know. So I thought like I needed to do to do something with it because um, it really talked to me. You know, it's it was like almost yeah. like. A calling, you know, like I was like, oh yeah, this is. Uh, I need. I feel. Uh, I feel. I feel close, close to this uh, sound. This, uh, you know. That's great. Like, like it, yeah. I um, I wanted to play the violin, but my dad didn't let me because he did not like the sound, and well, so I started playing the piano. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, yeah, I mean the piano. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a it's a good instrument. I mean, every, a lot of people start with a with a piano, so I don't I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had one. My grandmother's my grandmother's piano was um, was already in the house, so you know it was kind of natural. And then my my dad was a guitarist, so he played the guitar and the piano. Um, so I come from a musical family as well, but I'm not nearly as good as you and your brother. <laughs> well, I I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, good in music, you know, if you practice every day, you're going to be good for sure. I mean, I, I teach technique, instruments. So it's, 
it's just about i think it's about com commitment if you if you do it every day what you do if you do it with love you'll be yes. good at it um, that's definitely true and, and i'm sure i'm sure if you if you uh whatever you do in life uh, because we never met so, so i don't you you probably do it better than anybody else because you oh, thank you stuff. maybe i'm really bad but thank you i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> okay. so um going back to your story um you know tony told me a little bit about um the passion that you both share in not giving up and just really pursuing your dreams which is one of the most inspiring stories and i know everybody has their struggle and everybody's you know going through things but when he was telling me that you left uh france at 19 and then went to was it new york yeah in new york city yeah and then and then you were struggling so hard and everybody was like come home and you're like no i have to stay here and and make it yeah how how can you tell me a little bit from your side what was going through you at that time okay uh wow that's deep it's a deep uh, question so uh in my mind what was going, what's going on uh, i don't know so yeah when i was 19 uh, i moved to i moved to new york city and uh, i didn't know new york i didn't know anything about it i just had a feeling but I needed to leave Paris. Right. So I just, I didn't think about it. I didn't like, uh, I didn't like um, plan anything. Or I just went for it. I just, I just left, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> That's very yeah. admirable. Nobody I didn't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's admirable, but it's like, uh, it's a, kind of stupid actually. <laughs> okay. Well, you're pursuing your dream. Yeah. I did it because I don't have a choice, you know. I, I just realized really early on that uh, I don't want to do anything that I don't like. And I didn't right. want to stay in Paris. Uh, since I was in school early, I remember just thinking about I'm going to do only what I want and, and, and it, it, I, don't, I don't care what it takes, you know. I just do it. Right. That's. But you know what? That's a really good attitude and mind state to already have when you're that young. Because a lot of people, most people don't get to that mind state until they're older. They start doing what society tells them to do. And then later on, they're like, okay, well, maybe I don't want to do this. I have to do something I like. So you started early. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so you went to New York and you had no plan. So how did you, how did you get to a plan or how did you get to the place where you are now? Uh, what do you mean? What place am I? Where, where well, am I? I mean, you're, obviously, you're not struggling in New York anymore, and you're playing with the greatest. You have you have played with some of the greatest musicians there are. How you're in New York, you're struggling. You don't have a plan. So, what made the ball rolling? Where you were in a position where you're like, okay, now I'm getting somewhere. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't want to sound like uh, uh, you know, like. Um, uh, humble like you know like like fake humble you know so I'm not, no I'm it's not, okay this is your I, story so but i want to i want to i want to be true um uh, yeah i did I, I i don't know for me i still i'm still struggling you know honestly because it's it's a process and with ups and downs so um uh, it might be like a good time right now for me because i mean like for anybody it's not really a good time but uh you know right. like, uh, <laughs> But it's it, I, I still it's still I, I still better better off than m m most people right can right now. So uh, I'm lucky, but um, it I never thought about it as um as oh uh, I'm, I was struggling and now I don't struggle. I always think about it as a as a long uh, process, a long right. road. Uh, and I've I've been in the past going in very high heels, like uh, where I was like. Uh, getting a recognition and a very amazing experiences and then it went it went back down, down again yeah so um uh, you never know you never know so I, I, yeah I that's stay, true stay grounded and uh i did i made it uh, uh to the point where i was struggling i didn't have any money i didn't speak english uh through music music is my outlet and my 
my only place where I can right. um, hold on to. So when I was back in, in New York City and I didn't know anybody, I arrived to New York and things started um, being very horrible and like a nightmare. I couldn't, I couldn't eat, I couldn't, uh, you know, it was crazy. And every day, no matter what, what was happening with the challenges, I was always thinking about music, music, uh, even when I was like really uh, in the bad situations. So um, I guess fate gave me yes. this. And you know, it's funny because people talk about fate and they, t they talk about God and, uh, and, and, and church and everything. But when I talk about fate, for me, Fate is is right there. It's a uh, it's like it's the music. It's uh, it's like right. you dream, following your dreams and never give up. So this is my fate. This is, and I'm very spiritual in that in that term. Even though I don't go to church every Sunday, and actually I don't go to church any, any, right. <laughs> never. But I, I happen to go sometimes. But because I work with uh, uh, some it's musicians, it's weird schedule. Yeah. Yeah, but I I believe there's a force bigger than us. And if you if you channel it, if you connect to it, you you can be more confident and more uh, at peace with yourself. So um, for me, that that force is the force of music, you know, uh, yes. force of uh, creativity, um, with your developing your your voice and and exploring new possibilities. So right, that's what kept me from uh, losing it and not coming back to France, even though I was right. uh, poor and. Uh, unhealthy <laughs> okay so the reason why i wanted to touch on that the the, the struggle yeah. um is because we are now living in a world where the entire entertainment music industry is shut down and yeah. this is especially a time where people need inspiration motivation and faith and yeah. so you know uh one of the reasons i started this this what now series is to inspire and motivate creative people but also regular people to not give up and to maybe explore their own talents or other talents and you know stay positive and see the possibilities and when you speak of your own faith it also has a lot to do with the fact that you know that you are you believe in yourself. You know you're talented enough to be able to uh, get. Uh, let me let me cut you from that. I don't know that I'm talented enough. Know, I never know. No, and but you just what, told yeah. me. You just told me if you practice every day, oh, you yeah. get better. Yeah, you get better at technique and music uh, as right. a, a practical thing, but uh, you're still going to struggle with personal uh, dreams. You know, so it's it's never like. No, I don't That's know. true. But Sorry, you wouldn't. To no, but you wouldn't do what you what you do if you didn't believe that you at least had the ability to do it. If you really didn't yeah. know how to play an instrument, you would not sit here talking to me right now. Oof. <laughs> the Sorry, only thing, well, <laughs> no, no. But you know, I'm, I'm saying this to 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 have people understand that you can learn a craft. And you can, you know, get joy out of it. You you can enjoy playing an instrument or drawing yeah. or even if it's not your livelihood, even if you don't want to make money of it, you wanna you wanna have something that gives you joy. Yeah. That's the true. violin was your calling. You said it spoke to me. I love the sound. It's soothing, it's romantic, it's sweet. So you you play the violin and you you experience joy. Yeah. And that is something that we need in this time, especially in this crisis, we're stuck in the house to hmm. find something that you can enjoy doing. Yeah, that's, I don't know how to, to say it better than you just said, but um, yeah, <laughs> that's, so um, it take, yeah, it takes time to also accept yourself, you know? Yes, that's exactly because right. When you play music, it's very, it's very personal. So you get, uh, you get, uh, uh, especially when you improvise, you know, when you play, you play your own thing, you know, and not somebody else, uh, like, you know, writing. Or something. Right. So you, you get to a deep uh, uh, core of uh, acceptance of yourself, you know. And yes. it, takes, it takes time. It takes also 
different uh, turns. So you you could accept yourself for a little while and then return to not accepting yourself and then coming back. It's never it's never linear. It's always by way. Right. So uh, and that's the same. That's yeah. the same. What you just said about the music industry. It's it's an up and down because yeah. you can have a a great moment. You can let's say you have a number one hit as an artist, and then boom, the next day it's somebody else. And and that yeah. doesn't guarantee that you're successful with your next album or your next song. Yeah, exactly. Somebody else, yeah. but you know this is I, I like the fact that you say that somebody else because one of the reason why um, I'd never give up and I and I I still won't give up <laughs> and I still I'm still here. It's because uh, because I don't care about anybody else. And let me rephrase that. It's not that I don't care about <laughs> Explain. <people. laughs> I don't care about uh, if somebody does a, another hit or somebody plays the violin uh, right. uh, in a different way. Actually, but I don't care. I mean, I don't. You don't compare yourself. I don't. I don't compete yeah. with other people. Yes. I, I don't. I actually. I, I compete with myself. I have my own thing, and I want yes. to, I want to develop that, and I, I want to be the best as I can at what I do. But um, when I see other people, it used to distract me when I was younger. Now it's it's more inspiring, and I take uh, things that I, I consider um, uh, that touch me, like are interesting. Right. And and then I, I keep on doing my thing, and I, so of course there's always going to be people with. Uh, uh, more more gigs and uh, doing uh, more stuff than you, or even like yeah. uh, playing with some of your heroes, and you wanted to play with them, and you see them. And I don't get jealous of that. I get, I get actually uh, inspired. Inspired, yeah. yeah. Because I I know they have their thing, and it's beautiful, and and they express their thing, and so I just want to express my, my myself more. That's giving yeah. some. You no, know, so yeah. Uh, well, you, I, you, yeah. you and your brother are pretty similar when it comes to that, because he was saying the same thing, oh, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not, not sure. Not huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh, if, if your mom is in here because I know that she came in the t into the uh, the talk I had with Tony, but if she's in here listening, then she did a wonderful job raising these two young men you and your brother because the way like you said you don't want to be fake humble but it's i can just tell it's the way you raised and the way you just you you're used to you know because you both have it it has to be instilled in you i mean when i say uh, uh fake humble is because i hear too many interviews on instagram like what people say no no come on no well, yeah yes, i'm pretty good yeah and i think that is and i want to i want to smack my phone <laughs> <laughs> and, All right. you know, my, I also see the difference and I said that to Tony as well I see the difference between you two being French and me having usual talks with Americans no offense to any Americans I love my we friends just lost, my uh, we just lost like 20 people <laughs> okay. well it's, it's also a culture of certain status that yeah. I don't necessarily think that we have in Europe and so that that makes a big difference again it doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing but it is a difference between okay. you know artists yeah so I, I keep t touching on my phone and somebody says that's Stop. okay because I, I just like I'm in front of my window and today is super sunny it's like 90 degrees or something that's good anyway yeah it, I, I hear I hear you and also, I've di I've done a, a a lot of interviews on 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 like for different like festivals or whatever like you know like uh, when you get interview before a festival, or uh, uh, I don't know like on TV sometimes. So those things, each time I see myself, I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> I, I look like I'm <laughs> trying to be humble and it doesn't sound it it sounds unnatural. So now I'm just trying to be just true to what I. Uh, well, this is, the, this is, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. So I've been a music journalist for about almost 20 years. Oh. Um, right being on. yourself will never come off as fake, as pretentious as anything else. If you're just being you, then that's you. And if you know from yourself that you're not a pretentious person, then don't, ha you don't have to struggle trying to 
come off humble because you just being you. Yeah. And trust me, I've interviewed a lot of people and I see the difference. Wow. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I've seen the difference. And is um, a lot coming from, uh, from you. You don't even know me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, thank you. you. I wanted to sound, to sound American. It means a lot. I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just like, listen, man. I'm, this interview, this this live talk is really, I'm not a big magazine. I'm not getting paid. For You're this. not? This is just, no. Okay, sorry. I'm going to have to disconnect. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You're such a joker. Oh, my gosh. You and your brother crack me up. Uh, do you have Cookie there with you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about, seriously. <laughs> I love cookie. Um, okay, so going back to to the the seriousness of this, um, but you knew who I was talking about. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I have another one though. I've been doing. What, what did you do talk. with cookie? Cookie is like uh, sleeping right now. Uh, uh, who is this? What's this name? He has no name. He's just a stranger. <laughs> 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 stranger in my place. <laughs> okay. Space, well. uh, well, he's happy to make a cameo in somebody's life now. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to steal Cookie Shine. Yeah, he's like, hey, calm down, calm down. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay so. a monkey without a name. Go, yeah. um, I'm going to get back to the interview. So yeah. uh, you're in Dallas now? Yeah, Dallas, Texas. So how did you end up in Dallas? So uh, two, uh, one year ago, one year and a half ago, I was in New York City. I've been in New York City for a long time, so I was in New York and I got um, um, an opportunity to come here. Um, like they, uh, they were developing a, a new uh, line, a new program here uh, in, at the University of North Texas. Okay. Uh, so it's called UNT uh, University. It's, it's very uh, popular and well known for their jazz program. It's the top uh, number one jazz program in the world. Like, wow. so it's pretty it's pretty crazy. But, so, okay, yeah. Makes sense first, that you're there. Yeah, exactly. It's the first in America and it's the first in the world. And it just oh, comes wow. from America. And it was the first ever program created in the world in the university in 1940. 1940, oh, that wow. was the first university program for dedicated to jazz. So we had like Dizzy Gillespie coming. Uh, like We had like um, um, Dexter Gordon. Um, people, people like... Um, Lee Morgan, people right? Were, were like a That's amazing. Jazz, jazz. Even like uh, Don Cherry came there as a professor. Oh, wow. yeah. He was a professor. So um, yeah, so I got the, the call. They said they're opening for the first time a jazz violin uh, line. So they never had jazz violin before since 1940. They had like saxophone, piano, um, yeah. anything, drums, and. And so they, uh, they they asked me to do the audition, and uh, it was my first audition ever I ever did in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's amazing. So I came there, we were like all the candidates, and it was pretty uh, interesting, like stressful and intense. But I, I liked I liked the pressure, so I used it as a as it's a, a challenge. New challenge, yeah. Yeah, and then I got the job, and so now I'm creating, a, developing the new program with my own methodology. Uh, I wrote a book. And oh, wow. uh, we, with my students, we're working on the on this like on the things that I've been developing. So it's nice. <laughs> That's amazing, though. Um, yeah, now I now I understand Dallas. But yeah. um, <laughs> are you yeah are you now um, stuck in the house? Is there anything going on at the university at this point? Oh yeah. Uh, so the university uh, was a. Uh, uh, <laughs> The university was closed. Um, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't answer to that thing. So, um, um, yeah, the university was closed um, for physic. Like, phys we cannot yeah. go there basically. Right. But we have re we re we do remote teaching. So on the online. So until teachers. the end of the semester, and actually the semester end ended uh, yesterday. So now I'm like um, I'm in vacation, kind of. Yeah. Oh, that's the, good. In September, so uh, <laughs> in September the school will be open open again. Okay. I have an office. I have a wonderful office there, but I decorated myself. I'm pretty uh, happy about it, and I put all my things and 
on the walls and it, it's really nice to go to my personal office and just like, right. it's, like it's dedicated to music and I can all my passion if it's surreal because I've always been practicing in my bedroom when I was a kid and my parents yeah. and now I you was, have your own office exactly music yeah. has been part of my life you know? so I, it's funny because everybody told me like you're gonna have to work at one day you're gonna have to do a day job no and I never did and now when I have a day job it's a professor at the university yeah. and my 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 life my my job is to um practice more right my only job. That's, that's a dream come true <laughs> and share yeah and share my my observation and my discovery to, with my students with so, yeah with the students yeah i feel i feel like it's uh it's amazing because it's kind of a dream because i never wanted to be a professor or anything like this but i would like to share information and with my yeah. twin all the time so i feel like i'm doing the same thing with my students i'm just sharing as right. a musician, as a, a colleague, almost, like, even though they are, like, for most of them, uh, like, um, um, aspiring musicians, even though right. they already play, play really well, but they're, they, they still, they, they're just starting uh, in their career, so. Yeah, yeah, they're beginners. I'm teaching doctorate, yeah, they're beginners. doctorate, doctorate students and master students, and oh, undergrad, wow. too. So, half of my students are around 20 and the other half is about uh, 30 years old. They're some some right. of them are older than me, so it's pretty nice. Well, so. that's good that they still pick up their passion and want to make something out because you're never too old to pursue yeah. something you love. Um, yeah, that's true. So how long is, how long is the, um, the program? Um, how long, what do you mean? Like if I, if I want to, if I enter the program, if I audition and I'm good enough oh. to be accepted. Yeah. It depends on what grade you started on. You know, if you start as a... Yeah, as I got to start at zero. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess it would take five years for you because... Oh, uh, that's, that's not bad. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, it depends, I think, because some people start at master, they only do two years. Some people start uh, as doctorate students and right. DMA. So those, those guys, they have to stay three years with me. So it depends if you want a master's degree, if you want a doctorate, if you, what do you want to, to get yeah. out of it? But I think if you do the full thing uh, in one one shot, it, it might take five years to six years, so you'll be a doctor. From, right. I will give you a doctorate. No, I can. Oh, thank you. Is it crazy? <laughs> I, can, I can actually give a doctorate to somebody, which is like, uh, it blows would my mind. Would you ever would have thought that when you were a little kid, like you were passing out like doctorates and masters and... <laughs> I'm like I'm still I'm I'm still blown away when I when I think about it because it's uh, that's good that keeps you humble being yeah. still in awe of your own accomplishment oh, yeah. <laughs> every day every day I'm like wow so you said you wrote a book as well hey Tony calm down okay T Tony you have to calm yeah, down yeah Tony's going crazy in this in this thing um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I, I, I wrote a book uh, it's here it's um, I found a publisher publisher and. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the last minute, they told me that it was too complex, and they wanted me to to do to do more chapter for beginners, beginners. So you have to edit it. And I I don't want actually. So I, I, <laughs> find uh, a different publisher. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking also about uh, publishing it myself because yeah uh, yeah I, I just have a better access to to the people that would be interested in in it, so I would be able to di have a direct contact with uh, the, the readers and. Right. Well, think, honestly, it's yeah. it's the same thing as music. You can you can release and publish independently. Yeah. So, because yeah, I yeah. mean, one of my artists, he he writes books and he published his first one independently. And so, for the second one, we're gonna look at an actual publisher. But um, yeah, I think you should do it. I'm, I'm definitely interested in reading it. It's if it's not technical. Um, it's a little bit technical because it's mostly a book for. Um, for the program and I'm teaching, so it's, it's ah, like okay. a chapter from um, the curriculum and right. Okay, well then part of the maybe I should uh, read it. Syllabus. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be basically part of my syllabus that I teach for two semesters. So it's like the first part, part number one with uh, a few chapters about the, um, uh, the fundamentals right, uh, right. of improvisation, the basics, and then yeah. the second part talks more about um, uh, introspection into the harmony extensions and um, uh, specific bowings uh, for violin and jazz violin. So it's, okay. uh, it's, it's, it's kind of going over my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 
Okay, so I do think that you should either write a book about your life at some point, not today, or yeah, have I'm starting like a right documentary. Now. Uh, I'm starting as we talk. <laughs> really, that's good. I would love to read that and, and, and make notes. But um, yeah, or even a documentary about you and your brother growing up. It's like, I'm so fascinated by it. He told me this story about... Um, about where he had to pretend to be you oh, in a yeah. movie a movie premiere oh yeah so i did i did a i remember the story i did a movie um it was actually my first movie i did uh back in 2014 i think yeah 2014 2013 but definitely it was was the john wick right yeah it was john wick so yeah. the first one with uh Keanu reeves so i did um I did the, the movie, I did a scene with uh, Keanu Reeves where I'm just like playing the violin and it's passing right. by me. And then I did a uh, one track on the soundtrack uh, of a motion picture for the, yeah. the same movie. Because the filmmaker was uh, uh, close to Keanu Reeves and they came, they came to my show. And so it's a, oh, cool. a long story. So he so, put you on there. Yeah, yeah so I was, uh, I was talking with Keanu uh, and he was like, uh, it was really like a uh, really sweet and, and shy and uh, and and funny at the same time. So yeah, it was easy to easy to talk to him, and we spent the entire day together from five a.m. to seven wow. p.m. Five a.m. in the morning, crazy, and uh, in New York City. And then um, a few, I think like a few months later, there was a movie pro premiere. And I don't remember why I couldn't make it. I think because you have... had the Stevie Wonder um, thing. Oh, of course. oh yeah, I was playing with Stevie Wonder. Yeah, yeah. So I was playing at. Uh, what a, what a luxury problem to have, <laughs> Stevie Wonder or Keanu Reeves? I can't go to yeah. both. <laughs> I will tell you a story about that. Actually, it was another story like this. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was I, I said to Tony to just take my uh, my ID and go go yeah. to or something. <laughs> So because he, he, he was sitting next to Keanu Reeves, I think. So yeah, he uh, said something about that, and he was like, "Oh, you're the the musician." He's like, "Yes." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But so, did you think yeah. it was sad that you couldn't go to the movie premiere? Uh, no, I was not sad because when I went uh, to the movie uh, myself with every, um, like as a normal uh, customer. Yeah, just as a spectator. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I saw my name in the credits and uh, at the end. MGC or something. I don't know what movie, a M MAC or something like a movie theater in, in, in Times Square. Okay. Uh, and it was huge. Uh, no, Rig Regal. I think it's Regal theater or something. Whatever. Oh, and I, I don't know them. It was a big. It was a big movie theater. And it was crazy. And I was I was excited about that to see for the first time. And then after it's, this, yeah. Uh, like recently talking about that, I uh, I was uh, you know I'm teaching now here and so. Uh, sometimes I got called for tours or for for um, TV shows, things like this, because my friends in New York still contact me for that. So a friend of mine contacted me, and it was uh, to do something with Sun Ra. I don't know if you know Sun Ra. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I know Sun. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, um, they are like master uh, um, free jazz musician, and so there's something in the near Woodstock, and then something uh, in Buffalo. So. Uh, and it was organized by my friend Walters, Walter, and um, sorry, Walter Kemp. And so <laughs> I said that okay, I, I'm doing it. It didn't pay much money, but I wanted to do it because the music he was really, it, yeah. really cool. So I took my um, my my car to the help airport. Uh, I live ten minutes ten minutes from the airport, right there. So I okay. arrived to the airport, and I got a call from another friend. I won't mention the name because I, I don't think he would like that. But, uh, and he's, uh, he was directing the string section for Kanye, uh, no, for Kanye West. Oh, wow. Kanye West at the Hollywood Bowl uh, in LA. Wow. And you know, I'm two hours and a half from New York from here and two hours and a half yeah. from LA. I'm yeah, right yeah, yeah, middle. you're right in the middle, yeah. And I said, he said, can you come right now? Um, I, I, I get you a pen ticket in a, in a few <laughs> hours and come to LA. We have rehearsal with Kanye West. and. I was like, I'm actually at the airport going to New York. And he said, man, come on. And even like, uh, tell me like, how much, you, it was really good money, you know? And I said, uh, I had to take, turn it down, you know? Turn, turn, yeah. the, turn the West gig down. And I felt bad about it. And I chose the, the is, jazz, free jazz. 
but this but this is isn't this a moment where you're like why does everything have to be at the same time <laughs> Like, can you do this? Can you do this a week later? I never dated Solange. I know he's just kidding. I work with her. We, we. I don't. I didn't date her. (laughs) (laughs) So okay, you played with some of the greatest people. Um, Who is a person that you would love to still uh, play for or play with? Uh, I would say my twin brother. Really? Yeah. It's for me. You, You guys never played together. No, we played we played together a lot, but uh, I think it's one of the I mean not that much, but uh, it's, it's, it's one of the most incredible musician I know. Like it's like uh, it is it, really is really incredible. Like, I know. Uh, as a musician, as a composer, as a, as a, anyway. But um, okay, so are you guys gonna do a whole album together? Yeah, we're actually working on something right now. Um, so when I see when I see you two in your live streams, the bickering between brothers is so funny, so hilarious. But when I talk <laughs> to you guys all separately, you guys have so much love for one another. It's so cute to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not even love because I don't really like the dude, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is talent. exactly it's, what I mean. It's undeniable. It's, it's like in, in, undeniable. He has so much talent. <laughs> But it freaks me out sometimes. I'm like, are you really my brother, man? How did you learn all that shit? And he's like, eh, he sits down on the piano. He, haven't, he hasn't practiced in five years. I don't know. He never practiced. <laughs> and he, he's like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you got to, either he's a cocaine addict or he's really genius. So I don't know. I, I know he, he has no drugs. So it's probably the other one. <laughs> You're so terrible. You guys are so terrible. Uh, no, you guys are great. Um, so, so yeah, another artist also would be to work with Stevie Wonder again, because yeah, I, I worked with him be... for two years, uh, and and incredible musician, uh, and then there's like uh, many musicians that I, that I would love to to work more, and that I learned from, um, right? Like Jean Luc Ponty, um, I did something with Jean Luc Ponty a few years ago, and he's one of my hero and. It was incredible, incre- very inspiring to, to work with him. So isn't it, doesn't it feel amazing when you get to work with these people that you admire? Like, yeah, I mean, that like, must be uh, an overwhelming feeling. N- not overwhelming. I mean, the first time, yeah, uh, for, I, only I, then you get only used got, to it. No, 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 I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, no, no I, I don't get used to it. It's not, actually, you might have part of the truth in there, but, uh, I didn't get used to it, but um, each time I play with somebody I don't know, I get excited, but I, I don't I don't get overwhelmed. I, I get focused, focused. Right, and, uh, you get focused. And I get, a good I, get job. I get heavy. I get heavy, and I'm like, whew, okay, take a minute. You know, when I was working with Stevie Wonder, we were doing his uh, album "Songs in the Key of Life" for right. two years. Oh wow! All the songs. So I bought the album again. I added, but I bought the vinyl, the special edition, and I, oh, and then I was listening to it at home at home and I was like I'm practicing studying wonder yeah with his album because I'm gonna play with him so I'm studying it was it was like whoa what's happening it's crazy yeah so and and so after that I, I was we really, was the only person that we really, um make me feel stressed out because it he gave me a solo uh without uh, it was not organized you no know, basically I, I practiced the, the string part and everything else yeah to play something written and then the day of the of first performance at Madison Square Garden he came to me and he said hey man you're gonna play solo tonight <laughs> and I was like what uh, <laughs> okay. what tune what song he said you will see I will call your name <gasps> that's not over rears bye and then he left like this <laughs> <laughs> and I was oh like, my I was gosh like, I would be so nervous yeah I, I went backstage and I practiced uh he, t- he told me the key so no, no he didn't tell me anything he just left and his bass player uh, uh, Nat Watts, uh, Nate Watts, he tell me, hey man, it's gonna be C sharp minor. So I just practiced C sharp minor for, for like five hours. Oh, thank you. So he was a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, imagine it was in D minor then. I would have been fucked up. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, he could, yeah, he, yeah. He could have made a mistake, you know. Yeah. Who knows what Stevie is. Uh, well, he could have done that on purpose. Yeah, no, he's a he's, he's, uh, he's very uh, uh, spiritual. Um, 
bass player and very like so into kind uh, and, uh, yeah. uh, kindness you would never do that i think it's so well, much that's better. good so yeah so i i once saw stevie wonder at the north sea jazz festival over here Oof. and we were backstage and everybody was in line to take a picture with him so i was like i have to take a picture this, this might be my only shot so literally we're in line me and my friend and the, the person before us was the last one to take the picture they were right they cut it off right in front of us like that was it we have to go oh sorry i wanted sorry. to cry i was like no but i mean well, you can't really do anything they're going so but you know, so what Tony huh? did when he was backstage with me, he cried because he couldn't take a picture of Stevie. <laughs> so I said, hey, Tony, come here. And then he came and he had, he had his picture, thanks to me. Yeah, well, maybe if you play with him again, I'll come and, and, and try to have you weasel me yeah. in a photo. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing to, to meet you. And uh, yes. You know, my, yeah. um, my re really close friend, she lives in Houston. I'm there all the time. <laughs> And she has, she's an, uh, she's a visual artist and she never wanted a, a job either, but she's actually an art history professor now at oh, wow. university in Houston. So, oh, yeah. 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 So for her, it was kind of the same thing. Like, wow, I now have a job that actually has me teaching art to my students while I'm doing art myself. So yeah, that was, uh, so if I'm there, then I'll just hop over to Dallas. I'll check yeah. if you're home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you might be in LA or in New York or, you know. I, I don't think I'll be anywhere because of what's happening. But, but right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at things. I, I've, I have a movie coming, uh, I mean, like a movie I, I was working on coming out uh, next month. So I'm oh, excited really? about that. Yeah, uh, it's a new Spike Lee, Sp Spike Lee movie. Oh, wow. So it's called Da Five Bloods. And so oh, Spike played, Lee is always good. So yeah, yeah I worked with him for like a, a week in LA, and he's also a professor at uh, NYU. So he was flying from New York to come to LA. I was flying from Texas, and uh, it's funny because one day they called me for only one morning. So I did a few days with them, uh, with with, um, with Spike Spike Lee. And at the really nice, the same studio where we recorded The Lion King. So oh, wow. Because I did The Lion King, uh, the new one that just came out with uh, Hans Zimmer. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was doing like the soundtrack, it was mind blowing for me. And then uh, a few months later, I got a call from uh, the Spike Lee team, and we're, do it, we're doing it, uh, the recording for his movie in the same exact studio. So it was weird to come back to the studio to do So you, yeah, so you were already familiar. Yeah, so it was another incredible um, piece because uh, it's for the entire soundtrack of uh, Spike Lee new movie, and it's about the Vietnam War. Um, oh wow! See, seen from the perspective of black, black history, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. Like uh, Chadwick Boseman is one of the oh wow yeah, and uh, Jean Reno, French actor, is in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know Jean. Yeah. I, I'm, I know my movies, so. Yeah, I'm definitely so, gonna look forward to seeing yeah. that. You're, you have, I bet you have stories for days. I have, I actually have a Spike Lee story as well. Oh, yeah? I was in uh, New York a long time ago. It was my first time in New York. It was the year 2000, this is 20 years ago. And I was with my friend in Brooklyn and he told me, hey, this is where Spike Lee lives. And I just ran up those steps, rang the doorbell, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in New York, I'm gonna ring his doorbell and just say that I'm a fan. And then he never opened the door because he wasn't home. That's my uh, Spike Lee movie, uh, my Spike Lee uh, <laughs> anecdote. <laughs> but I tried. Yeah. That's nice, yeah. that's crazy. Like, well, I, I'm like, what, what is he gonna do? I'm one person, it's not like I'm gonna ambush him. I just wanna say hi. <laughs> yeah, he's it, it, probably never home, so. Yeah, he's never up, home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. so Okay, so I know you can probably talk about all these stories um, for no, days. I can't. I can't. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine then. then. We're just going to cut it off here. <laughs> uh, but I do want to ask you, now that you're at home, what are some of the things that keep you busy while you're in so-called quarantine? What keeps me busy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, my heart beating. 
Yeah, uh, but I mean, what what do uh, you do? So, so what can you do? I, I wake up in the morning. Uh, I go to, I go run. Uh, I I I work out. I work out every day. I I try to. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I I'm making it, but uh, you're just I, chilling. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't try to chill. I'm just trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to find a purpose, but I can't. So far, I've been uh, very impromptu. And... So this is funny because when I ask all these people that talk to me, so what keeps you creative? What are you doing? They have all these stories, and you're like the first person that says, "Oh yeah, I don't know. I run. I you know." <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bullshit. I don't want to bullshit. And uh, it's what, honest. <laughs> what, what, to, to be honest, I hear these things on Instagram all the time, and people are saying that, and it looks like they're on. Uh, uh, automatic pilot and they're just saying that oh yeah i've been uh, reading a lot of books and i've been uh, working on myself I've well, that's the people i talk to they're honest yeah. <laughs> okay but for for myself i'm just uh, i think i'm i'm just like most probably the majority of people i'm just trying to figure out uh, exactly how to manage this and i'm yeah. just uh, i'm doing what some I have some days where, where it's really cool where I feel like wow I had a good day you know if I did uh, all my things and I managed right. something something cool but most of the day I'm gonna be very uh, improductive not uh, yeah not productive at all actually and I'm gonna be uh, just uh, happy that uh, I was able to uh, run for like four miles right it will be like wow that's an achievement that's it. Well, you know, you have like the movie from Spike Lee coming out and all, so, you know. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I, I was lucky because right before the thing, I did a lot of work, work in, in LA. When it, it, so I have a lot of things that are delayed and coming out now. So Right. Well, like, that's uh, good. So at least you have stuff to look forward to. Like, yeah, I just got the, uh, uh, some Grammys certificate that I did from, uh, for, for a show, with, uh, for an, an album with John Legend. I recorded Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. It's Christmas Amazing. album. And then I did something with uh, Ben Onkoso. Uh, I saw that. It was so great to see that. I, I, love, I shared it. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so it's funny because his, uh, his manager is here with us on the chat. Uh, so, but how did, you, how did you get that? How did you do that? Uh, the, the GQ thing? Yeah, you know, how, GQ? Did you, how did you, how did you do, that, do that all together? So we, we, it's a secret. I cannot tell you everything. But uh, <laughs> what I can tell you is like it was the same, almost the same day. And um, so we 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 record ourselves as a live. So we, the rhythm section comes in, and then you you record your part of a rhythm section, and you I hear them in my headphones, and I see them on my screen, so I can play. So it's kind of a live but um, delayed. Yeah, live. yeah, exactly. But, uh, so it was it, it it was really interesting to see how that worked out so beautiful. That was a beautiful yeah, song. And ben Onkoso is one of uh, my favorite artists in France, and uh, he's, he's been here a lot in Amsterdam. Yeah, he's been he's been, he's been uh, in, in Europe and even in Brooklyn. He's, he's really well respected in uh, in New York City yeah. as well. And I was about to to play some shows with him. We met like through a friend, but he's a photographer, and it was crazy because we met uh, we met like it is the most random, uh, and he was playing at the Brooklyn Festival. Uh, like uh, yeah, in Prospect Park. So I, yeah. uh, I played one song with him, and then he, I was in in Europe, and he he went on tour in London or something like this, in his uh, uh, tour bus, and he stopped by Paris. I was there. We had we we had a friendship like immediately, like it was right. Um, oh, Tony, <laughs> <laughs> he's all so, over the place. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So the thing with uh, I didn't know it was for GQ, so I I recorded the part. Oh, yeah, then yeah. I say as a joke, I say, hey man, uh, we don't need to look that good, right? It's like he say, no, no, no big deal, no big deal. Like, and then I say, it's not like it's gonna be for GQ or something. And I say, no, actually, it's for, it's for GQ. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> and you're like, okay, so we have to really do our best. Um, like, I'm shit. looking at this. Okay, so I talk to a lot of people. And this, this is the most people that have, have ever looked at my live. And really? this is the first live that I didn't bother to do my hair or... And I'm like, That's damn, now half the world is looking at me and I didn't even do anything. Um, <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, no, no, it's a, 
uh, I saw there are some some of my favorite musicians in the in the chat. Like, oh, really? Yeah, well, so. I just I put this in here. Like, if people have questions, put it in the in the question box so it doesn't you know scroll yeah, away. If you have questions, um, yeah. There was one question. <laughs> what is your favorite <laughs> rum? Rum. So I don't I don't really drink uh, <laughs> a lot, but when I do, I do Nesson. Nesson from West Indies from Martinique. It's the best. Rum. Okay. But uh, yeah. Oh, now question. the question is, who who am I? I'm really nobody. I'm just here to introduce all the greatness. <laughs> who is Pay Fresh? Yeah, that's me. I'm Pay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a music journalist, so this is what I do. I talk to people. Uh, and you, you talk pretty well. You talk pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I've been doing this, so I, mean, I just I actually the... did my first. I did my first live cast. And there were like 800 people tuned in, which was also exciting. Um, wow. to, it was uh, on Thursday. It was about um, the festivals and events industry being, you know, uh, in pain right now and suffering. And so we had people from all over the world uh, call in, which was pretty amazing. Um, wow. But yeah, yeah. It, it's not about me. It's about you today. No, no, uh, it's, about, have... it's, about, it's, it's really about us, I think, right now. So it's like... Well, that's true. Um, although we have I mean. been talking for almost an hour. Uh, oh, so it means it's over? You're going to dump me? I guess. I mean, I didn't think I could talk to you for this long, but you have so many interesting stories. Like, I would love to sit down with you and, and drink. What was it? What was the rum? What was the, the martini? Uh, Nes Nesson. Nes who? Nesson? Yeah. Nesson? Yeah. Okay. Well, I would love to sit with you and drink I a mean glass of Nesson. <laughs> Yeah, it will be probably the first time I drink in, in years because uh Well we don't have we can drink water. I, I don't really drink. Oh wait, there's another question. Oh, oh my gosh. Go. <laughs> okay, Tony, I'm not gonna ask all the que all the questions that you're putting in here. Um because <laughs> no, no I don't show the bottle. bottle. I don't wanna show the bottle. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna drink together whether it's alcohol or water when we meet. Um, I'm just happy that I know of you and I know of your work. Yeah. Oh, let's play cards. I play cards too. Oh, yeah. um, I Not love so. your music and I love the relationship you have with your brother. It really, it, it's just, it warms my heart to see you two on live stream. So yeah, if you guys have a chance again to go live, I'm there. Um, are you planning on coming back to visit Paris at some point if the yeah, plans are going? About, I was thinking about coming in uh, in December. Okay, I might be in Australia, but if I'm not, I'll hop over to Paris. <laughs> I mean, like for me, uh, I haven't been in Paris for a long time. I think since for three years, I haven't been in in France. Really? I think last time it was in when I played at the Philharmonie of Paris. It's a big, uh, it's a big uh, place, and uh, well, your mother said she misses you. I saw her comment come by that she misses you. Oh, I didn't see it. It's it all the way up there. I saw oh, it, it come by. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the things like I have a project. Actually, I have a project in Paris in the, in March. Uh, you have a way. I have a project in Paris. Next it's March. A, yeah, I'm playing with uh, Joy Star. Okay, so you know jo Joy Star? The... Yes, I do. And Matthew Shedid. If... Matthew Shedid. If um, you if, if you're coming in March, then I'm I'm getting in my car and driving to Paris. Yeah, it's, you should come. Uh, I'm. It's gonna be in Paris for a week. I'm gonna do something at the theater. Uh, oh, it's wow. gonna be like it's it's still uh, in development, but uh, I got some uh, of the lines of the contract. Right. Because so I cannot talk about the details, but uh, it's going to be um, mixing uh, music and uh, and and um, theater. Wow! I'm, well, I want to see that, so I'll I'll just be Tony's plus one. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with him. <laughs> um, okay. Well, is there anything that you want to give out to the people as far as a life quote or a motto that you live by? <laughs> uh, do your thing and fuck everybody. 
That's really good. Not literally. Let me add. He doesn't mean fuck everybody literally. No, but... not sexually. I'm talking right, like exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, can I say I... bye? Can I say bye to the monkey? <laughs> oh yeah. Hi. <laughs> you have all these. I feel like you have all these monkeys in your house now. I have a lot of monkeys in my house, and they keep me alive. You want to know what I do during quarantine? I talk to my monkeys. I pet them. I know, because the monkey has been talking on the live stream too. <laughs> and singing. I have a clip of the monkey. Let, let, let me get the bottle. Let me get the bottle. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's going to get the bottle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Monkeys. Here we go. Oh, Nesson. Okay. Good. Good to know. All right. Tony always want to see the <laughs> everything. Like, yeah, it's like uh, show me a bottle. Now he says merci. Merci, merci. I have a bottle here. I can, but it's just yeah. Jack Daniel's show honey. Show, show me the bottle. You want to see the bottle? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, hold on. This is mine. Wow. This is bad. This is what I drink. This is bad. And why? It's, it's whiskey. I know. I have whiskey too. I love whiskey. My little whiskey know, with, the, with some ice on the rocks, you know? What about this one? That's whiskey now. I've never drank that one. It's, it's I like to try new whiskeys. This one is really good. Oh, it's a rye. Okay. Well, keep that one when I come visit you. I want to try that one. Yeah, okay. Do you? you we can start separate. drinking whiskey. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, so life model, uh, find your own model and basically, and don't uh, listen to anybody because they're always wrong. You all, the only person <laughs> that knows what you want is yourself. And don't this is true. No, because this is true. Like I've, I've been, I've been always like this. I was follow my voice, and I, I like to listen to other people. For, but I don't like in welcome, uh, um, in welcome like um, uh, moral and uh, kind of like trying to guide me when I didn't ask for anything. Right, so, right, uh, right. And I find most people usually they are the most lost. The people who try to to guide people is because themselves they didn't find themselves so they're, they're just trying to transfer their own fears on you oh yeah so, they reflect so, on others yeah yeah so what i do is like i would say just like uh don't don't like uh lose don't worry about everybody focus. else yeah. yeah exactly don't lose the focus on your inner voice and that's it that's all that matters that's if a you, really good right. one because i've yeah. ignored my inner voice for so long um and i've stopped doing that and life is better when I started yeah. listening to to, there we go. to my inner voice, and it's gonna, it's I'm getting be... a countdown. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Okay. So, again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, we may do a follow up at some point if we're still quarantined. Yeah. Yes. And we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you for for wanting to be a guest. Yeah, you're the best. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.